So what's up guys, welcome back again for another video on the channel. Today we're talking about different types of marine biologists. So I think a really big misconception across um, young people learning about marine biology, trying to become a marine biologist, is that there isn't a singular lifestyle of one particular marine biologist. The field is extremely diverse and any particular marine biologist probably has an extremely different lifestyle, different field work, and different types of things that they do on a day-to-day -day basis than the next marine biologist. So today I'm going to be talking about not necessarily all the different types of marine biologists, but some of the major types that I have personally had experience with. So if you're new to this channel, my name's Eli, I'm a scuba instructor and I work at the Whale Shark Oceanic Research Center as the social media coordinator. If you're interested in keeping up with my day-to-day -day crazy life that I have going on here on the island of Utila, then definitely check out my Instagram. But let's go ahead and start with today's topic. So the first up on our list is a deep sea biologist. So this was actually the type of biologist that my main supervisor was in my undergrad. So I have a decent amount of experience with this type of marine biologist. They are basically the explorers of the deep ocean via a remotely operated vehicle or a submarine. A submarine is probably a pretty rare way that a marine biologist is going to be exploring the deep sea and that's just because it is extremely expensive to get a submarine and to be able to actually get it out on the ocean and go down in it. That is pretty logistically difficult, but it does happen. There is a very small number of individuals that are able to do that, but it is actually a thing. Very often, these biologists are spending between one week up to a whole month out at sea at some point in the year. And the reason why this is such a small chunk of the year is because it's so logistically and financially difficult to organize these expeditions. Deep sea biologists often need very expensive equipment to do their type of work because they're working in such an extreme environment and you need to be so far out in the ocean to be able to do it. It also takes a lot of different people to make it happen. So it's definitely a very expensive type of um, biology as well, but it is super cool what you're able to actually discover. This is a very young field and only 5% of the ocean has actually even been mapped via sonar and such a small fraction of that has actually been seen by the human eye. Working as a deep sea biologist you have an insane potential to discover new species and see things that no other human has ever seen before which I think is just absolutely amazing and a really really cool part of this type of biology. So for the rest of the year after your field work you're probably going to be working in a lab working in an office working with all of the data that you collected during that period of field work and you're also probably going to be writing grants and writing publications as many other marine biologists are also doing so the next up on our list the next type of biologist is a fish biologist so a fish biologist may study just one species or they might study a community of species and generally their field work is going to take between one month or up to three months of the year. This type of work often involves a whole lot of hands-on, very dirty work on a boat. So working with fish, you're often going to be working on a boat with lots of nets, lots of lines, lots of fishing poles, all kinds of fishing gear to actually make sure that you are able to collect data. So the type of biology or the type of data collection that I was able to specifically um, participate in on during my undergrad with a fish biologist was using long line surveys. So we would set out long lines, we would cut up bait for a very long time, and we would put all of those baits on the line, and then we'd set out the line, and then we would bring in that line and basically handle with our hands everything that came up on those lines. I think this is probably one of the more, the most hands-on type of biology positions that I've ever been in. 
And for some people, this is super cool. You get to be hands-on with the species and directly interacting with them and seeing some of the coolest species on the reef or on whatever type of ecosystem that you're working with. I got to see so many different types of sharks with the field work that I participated in with the um, shark biologist at my university. And I got to see uh, tiger sharks, lemon sharks, hammerheads, bull sharks, so many different types of sharks working with this specific lab. Very cool type of research, very hands-on. So for the rest of the year that you're not doing field work, you're probably going to be analyzing that data in a lab, writing grants and writing research papers, and maybe even working with students if you're working with a university. So the third type of marine biologist I wanted to talk about is one of my favorites, and that is a benthic biologist. So benthic refers to anything living on the sea floor. And this is honestly, I don't think there's anyone that specifically identifies as a benthic biologist, but I just put this title because it encompasses so many different types of marine biology, a lot of things that are just on the sea floor. This is basically going to be a biologist that studies a specific species or a community of species that is living on the seafloor. The fieldwork for a benthic biologist is probably going to be between one and three months. Again, this is usually a standard range for most biologists. They will generally spend about one to three months of the year doing fieldwork and the rest of it analyzing it. But for this type of field work, I found that there is a lot more snorkeling and scuba diving than the other types of marine biologists previously mentioned, deep sea and fish. For this kind of biology, it's really, really useful for you to directly be observing these things within the marine environment. So whether that be through snorkel or through scuba. So some examples of research projects that I have previously been involved in. So for my undergraduate thesis, this was a type of benthic biology that I did. I was studying how things grow on artificial reefs. So it was really useful to go dive on those artificial reefs and make observations, take measurements, get samples, all that sort of thing. Um, on the actual artificial reef. Another example could be how coral communities differ through different regions, or another example could be how sponge communities change at different points in time. There's so many different types of things that can occur within this very large umbrella of benthic marine biologists, but many of these types of biologists are going to be doing their research via snorkel or scuba. I also wanted to mention that this type of marine biologist is again going to be spending a portion of their year doing this field work and then the rest of the year they are going to be analyzing it in a lab or the office as all marine biologists are often doing. They may also be working with students like other marine biologists. So the next type of marine biologist I wanted to talk about is a marine ecologist. So a marine ecologist is interested in species behavior or interactions between different species. So I think this is a really fascinating type of marine biology because this is kind of like my area of focus within, I also like benthic biology, but marine ecology is something that I also love. But very generally speaking about this type of marine biologist, Marine ecologist is interested in how one species relates to another. So one example from my previous university at Florida State was a professor that looked at grazing behavior of parrotfish. So they followed parrotfish around the reef to see where they grazed. This is just an example of how a marine ecologist could look at behavior. So there's so many different kinds of studies that I could give examples of, like how a uh, clownfish associates with an anemone or how different shrimp interact with each other and try to communicate with each other. There's so many different types of things that are involved with the, this whole subject, but I did want to generally say that a lot of field work within this type of marine biology is involving scuba diving and snorkeling because a lot of it is heavily reliant on gaining first-hand observations 
because it's really important as a scientist to kind of be there to directly observe what's going on, what are the general um, surroundings, what's leading to this behavior, these interactions, what's contributing to it. So it's really valuable to have um, direct field experience, although some experience can be, of course, obtained through footage and filming of these types of interactions as well. So the last type of marine biologist I wanted to talk about is one that's a little bit different from all the others that I've talked about, and that is a population biologist. So a population biologist is interested in how a population of organisms is behaving. So this type of marine biology often actually uses a lot of math and modeling. With this idea of modeling a population, it's basically using what you know about a population, maybe it's a population of fish, and placing what you know into a coding program and creating a model to predict what happens in the future. It's a super cool and super important type of research that occurs and it often is extremely important for fishery science. This type of research can tell us when a population is going to crash and when is the most sustainable point to actually harvest a fish species. This is often how the government will come up with size regulations according to this, um, this point that has been determined from these mathematical models of when the ideal point or ideal size is of a fish to um, take that's ideal for its reproduction. So sometimes this type of marine biology doesn't even need to involve any field work, which I think is really interesting that you literally don't even need to go in the environment because you can take the numbers that have been obtained through different research studies. Someone else can be producing reproduction or agent growth studies or something like that and you can take the values that you've obtained from that research that's already been done and then create a model from that. So it sometimes doesn't even obtain, it, does, it doesn't even involve any field work, although sometimes you might need to get in the field yourself to get some specific variables that you need for the models that you're trying to create. So this type of marine biology is incredibly important for sustainable fishing because it really helps us identify the ideal size and the ideal kind of uh, fishing haul for fishermen to be aware of. And it really helps us better understand how to not crash a population because models can predict when that's going to happen. It's definitely not a perfect science, but it's definitely an extremely valuable tool to learn how to develop more sustainable fishing practices. So those were my types of marine biologists, and I'm sorry this probably wasn't the most clear-cut definitions for each one. And that's mainly because there are so many types of marine biologists out there. And if I tried to shove so many under a single umbrella, it just isn't possible because every scientist does extremely different things. I just tried to create the largest umbrellas that I could with the types of marine biologists that I have personally had experience with because I've noticed some big differences within them. So I hope that was still helpful and if you still have questions I encourage you to leave them in the comments below and we'll try to start some more discussion about it but otherwise stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Oh.